relax the strict rules of evidence so that you might not be hampered by these rules, technical rules, which exclude evidence, which we even lawyers know may be true, but be technically inad inadmissible under the provisions of the Evidence Act. But what I would like to say as uh, I resume my seat now is that I think that you have First, you have had to be subjected to a situation, a state of helplessness sometimes, because no one will pretend here that you have had the response and cooperation of witnesses and parties as much as you would have liked. I know that you have exhibited considerable amount of restraint because the powers the compulsory powers that you had were there for you to use, but I know that you have exhibited restraint, amazing restraint, uh, in not going the whole hog. I am not sure that I am completely happy that this has had to happen. But one thing I always bear in mind is that the other members of the commission must consider themselves lucky in having as your leader a judge of great learning and erudition and of great tact. But I know also that he is a man of great courage. I know as a fact that Many leaders and chairmen of tribunals who are lawyers have always wielded their power and authority and domination over the other members of the tribunal and just forced them to run after, along with them. But I know, I can see that your chairman has not used all his powers to drag you along. I know he has bent over double sometimes to make sure that it carries you along. And for that alone, I'm certain that at the end of your deliberations, you will all come away satisfied that you have not been bossed in any way, you have not been forced to decisions which you didn't want to, if we didn't want to take. I feel that at the end of the day, history will have to give its judgment on your performance. And I believe that whatever judgment will be, will, will, that will be given is the judgment that you want the, the uh, history to give. <clears throat> and that will depend on how you approach ultimately the resolution of, your, of the matters placed before you. It is my respectful view that you ought not to sacrifice on the whole the expediency, the need to effect reconciliation for the prime responsibilities entrusted to you by your terms of reference. And it is my respectful submission that this must be the prime consideration because many Nigerians who have come here and those who have not come have been watching you round the clock. And many of them will only pass judgment if they feel that you have bent over and listened to everybody's complaints as much as you can. I know as a fact, I am convinced, and sometimes I am almost uh, amazed at the facility with ease with which your, your commission has waived the rules of evidence. Almost any document that is brought before you, the, your, the chairman is ready to give it a, a exhibit number 
before counsel on the other side get up to object. But I'm sure that only has the effect of sending a message that you are ready to listen to everybody and to everything that they want to say. But I'm sure that at the right time, I'm confident that you will be properly directed as to which documents and which evidence you will eventually rely upon. Once again, I would like to congratulate you. And if I have to pass my own judgment, um, I know what I would say. But I would say certainly that I have personally been satisfied and not just impressed, but perhaps overwhelmed by the great tact and the humility that you have dis uh, displayed in dealing with the very multifarious problems that you have that we Nigerians have brought to you. And I hope that by the time you give your judgment, the verdict of history will be in your favor. Thank you very much. My Lord, the Chairman of the Commission, other members, I wanted to say my colleagues, but I revert the Reverend Gentleman, so I just say other members. Um, Chief Gioke Ajayi San, Emmanuel Toro San, distinguished um, lawyers of this nation. Thank you. Other uh, distinguished Nigerians here, and our great friends, the media. It has been a long drawn uh, program, but for me, the lessons are great. And for me, it's a great privilege to sit, to listen, to participate. Uh, I have learned so much. I myself have been part of the conflicts of this country. I've been a direct victim. And I'd always known that there are many others who had also suffered in a lot of ways. But I've also now come face to face and listened to others. So in licking my own wounds, I've also seen others and quite honestly, it feels a lot easier for me. And I know that one thing is important to me in this country, the issue of peace and reconciliation. No matter what has happened, no matter what the judgment, no matter what the declaration, in the end, we don't go anywhere except there is peace and accept we reconcile with one another. I think life itself is full of conflicts. Life itself is full of problems. But what Nigerians, and what I would recommend for Nigerians is, yes, we have arguments, we quarrel, we fight. In fact, it has been proved we even kill. At the end of the day, for those who survive, there is need to reconcile. There is need to confess, to repent, to confess, to forgive, and to reconcile. And whatever comes out of this exercise, I think and pray, I hope, that this will be the beginning of the process for Nigerians, for us to know that we must disagree before we disagree. And also, that indeed, peace cannot be wished. Peace cannot be brought by all these documents and all these pronouncements. Peace must start from the basics, from homes, from communities, on to the whole. Because without peace, we can get nowhere. Without peace, our children and our grandchildren will judge us. So much has happened, and as uh, 
Father Kuka said, the people who are listening to some of the things that have come up again, have been on earth, the wounds that have been reopened, what the, what the message from us is that, yes, these things have happened, yes, people have been hurt, yes, the wrongs have been done. Where do we go from there? We must seek the way of peace. And for me, that is the great motivation, and that is what will lead as much when we are looking at what we've seen. We must pronounce what is ill, but also pronounce how do we reconcile? How does peace come about? And how do people come to live together again in peace for the goodness, for the peace, for the progress and the development of this country? Mr. Chairman, it's my great great privilege. I find it, I don't think there's any experience in my life that is beyond this. And I hope that at the end of the day, whatever comes out of the toil that we will put into writing our report, at the end we will be known, this commission will be known to have sat, to have listened, to have pronounced, and to have been instrumental to peace of this country. Thank you, sir. Well, I didn't know that we are all supposed to say something, but as you know, I mean, uh, talking is my line of business. Um, I just, you know, just align with uh, Mama and what she has said. I think uh, one would like to personally thank uh, the president for this wonderful opportunity for serving on this uh, commission, but also thank in a very special way, the great people of Nigeria who rose up and uh, supported this commission. I personally, you know, when I tell people that I don't have problems with this country, it sounds a bit funny. But if you're only looking at Nigeria uh, against the background of uh, what is happening elsewhere, you will probably not appreciate. Um, in September, I think it was, was it this year? I had the privilege of being at an international conference in the Philippines. And it was a conference on truth commissions around the world to which I was invited. Now, when I listen to what other people have gone through, and they were talking, there were people from almost every part of the world. And as we are talking, there are not less than 20 countries trying to do the things that we are doing. But when I listen to their stories, they just, I mean, what we are talking about in Nigeria is child's play. And I'm not, I'm not joking. I believe with all my heart that this is a very great country um, with incredibly gifted people. And if you travel the length and breadth of this country and travel elsewhere and you see, not just the enormous, we tend to talk about resources in terms of oil and so on and so forth. But when you just look at the, the, the human beings that are in this country and their potential, I think that all that we are looking for, we'll have to go back to what you know Achebe say, somebody to give us the vision and the leadership to be able to move in one direction. It is wonderful that we have this commission, even if it has not achieved anything, it has managed to bring people from different ends of this country to come and cry publicly and laugh publicly. People who never had the advantage of being near television, people whose uh, tragedies occurred at a time that CNN was not very popular, or uh, people who had their own problems where uh, 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 there were no people to bring their stories to the, to, to the open, have had an opportunity to tell their stories. And I think that that is really one of the most wonderful steps that we have taken towards national healing. I, as I said to Nigerians, and the issue has come up here, how do we build a United Nation. It is important for us to know that the processes of constructing, constructing a United Nations are very, very complex, far more complex than we can understand. But if we start off from just a, hum a very simple reality on the ground in Nigeria, you take the average person who is a graduate today. Most na children born are likely to be born in a private hospital. Most children going to school, children of the elite, are likely to go to private schools. 
most Nigerians who are very serious business are likely to rely on NEPA, at least between now and December. Most people who are looking for good water to drink are more likely to be relying on their own borehole. So if you look at the life of an ordinary Nigerian, we are all surviving as if we don't have a father. So the things that the Nigerian state ought to have been able to do for us in order to win our allegiance, it has not done them. So when we find ourselves saying, how is it that this country is not united? And why is it that we are not prepared to die for Nigeria? Nobody is stupid enough to go and die if there is no reason to die. Thank you very much. So I think that um, we are lucky that democracy is now back on course. And it is giving us an opportunity to think about our lives, to design new values, hopefully shared values that will rise beyond the limitations of ethnicity and religion. But it must be important to realize that the reason why religion has become so important in Nigeria is because there was nobody, no state, no leadership to claim out the allegiance of ordinary Nigerian. That is why people have now fallen back on religion because if you are looking for a job today, it is your pastor, it is your imam, it is your priest that is more likely to help you write a letter. We must work towards a Nigeria in which we can understand the Nigerian state as our father. That is about the only point we can come to. And it's going to be a very, very long journey. But I think not this commission has offered us a wonderful opportunity to look at our past, but most importantly, to look at the best way forward. And for those who think that the commission may not have answered all our questions, the commission, I don't think, was set up to answer our questions. It was set up to help us raise more questions. And I hope that uh, from the evidence and the things we have had, people will worry less about the report because people keep asking me, how are we going to ensure that the report of this commission is implemented? And I tell them, you really don't have to worry because 95% of the report is already out in public. It's been there on NTA every blessed day. You're only anxious about a report when a committee sits behind closed doors and you don't know what is being discussed. But everybody has been here, everybody had everything. So even if at the end of the day there is no report, I think many of us are very clear about many things. But I'd just like to end by thanking all of you very sincerely, especially the few people that I found quite fascinating. Namely, these cameramen who keep standing from morning till we close from here. I find it difficult to understand where they get the energy from and how they manage. That is because um, the NTA girl there has spent quite a lot of time. They, you know, the male journalists you see sitting behind there. Um, it's the women they send to go and buy guguru outside. And it's, not, it's really not fair on, on the woman. But I think the woman who is selling guguru and granddaughter here has made quite a lot of money from, from the journalists. Um, and it, I, they, 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 are, they have been a side attraction for me because I keep watching them. But I notice the cameramen now, when you see these black bags hanging around the cameras, they're not, they're not empty tapes. They are guguru that is packed inside. <laughs> but everybody has made a wonderful contribution. And on my, as I said, on a final note, I like, I like on my own behalf to, to really say that it has been a wonderful privilege serving this country through this commission. Thank you once again. And working under Baba, I can assure you, as I told one of our bishops, I really don't miss leaving the Catholic Secretariat. I don't miss my bishop because I call my bishop my lord, and now I'm calling another layman my lord. So I don't miss my bishop very much. But thank you very much. Uh, chairman, members of the commission, uh, members of the bar, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I, I think what Father Kuka and Mama have said uh, ably capture my own views on the experience one has had out here. To me, it has been a most humbling experience. Uh, if you know where I come from, as a minority, uh, who is also supposed to have brought a petition against the majority tribes in this country. I think this is one of the dividends of democracy. Honestly, under the previous dispensations, there is no way people like me could have been noticed, let alone be interested to serve on a panel like this. Uh, it has been a very, very good experience what one has learned from the testimonies of others here uh, goes to reinforce my belief that what we really lack are 
honest leaders in this country. There's enough for our needs, but not enough for our greed. All these violations we've had here, the end of it all, you see, it is the ordinary children of the poor, the ordinary people in Nigeria that have suffered for it. Uh, when these things happen, the rich, whether they are Christians or Muslims, go to the exchange, stock exchange, they are sharing the dividends uh, they get from the companies they own and leave us with our lot. Uh, I think that is a tragedy. And what we really need, like I have said, is honest leadership. If we have honest leadership and we are our brother's keepers, it doesn't matter whether you are a Christian. In my village, uh, Christians, uh, Muslims, live together side by side, and the Igbos, Yorubas, we interact. It is only when the elites come with what they have prepared, they put us in trouble. And uh, that, to me, is the issue that Nigeria and all Nigerians must face. How to evolve true leadership that will give everybody level playing ground so that uh, we can all make our own contributions to the development of this great country. And on this note, I think that there is no way else I can reiterate this more than to quote what uh, the Arewa people said in their first memo uh, at page 24, the last paragraph. They said, and I quote, the problem of Nigeria is with us, the elites. Let us sincerely accept our responsibilities. Let us be sincere to each other. What Nigeria needs is a change of heart by all Nigerians. What we should pray for is the leadership to give us that will. On this note, I rest my case and thank everybody who has made this enterprise a success. God bless us all. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, sir. Everybody here present, especially the sons, I'm seizing this opportunity to tell you people how I felt. I haven't had to serve on this uh, commission for the past two years. To me, it's novel. I've never really served on any type of uh, commission like this. And I've, uh, I have acquired a lot of experience. There are a few things that I'd heard and I'd read that I didn't know could happen in this country. At times, after listening to what people say, I, I have a blinding headache. I don't know. I'm surprised because I don't expect it to happen, but it has happened. And um, uh, one is uh, happy that people who are affected in one way or the other have been able to come out and say to the world what exactly has happened, I believe. Having done that, maybe some of their problems would have been solved. That is an aspect of it. Another thing is this. Uh, I'm just hoping that after we would have submitted our report to those who set us up, they will not stop with this commission. Day in, day out, there are a lot of human rights abuses going on around us. We are trying to find solution and uh, to issues, but here and there, people are still fighting, killing themselves for little or nothing. And like some people have said, without the fear of being repetitive, I want to say that we have a lot of problem in this country caused by the elites. Everything depends on elitism. When they tell you we have a democracy, anyway, People who have read uh, something about political science will know that there's nothing really democratic about democracy because it is the way the elites want us to behave, want us to be ruled, that they put in practice on the ground and they bring it outside. And we think we really have democracy. I hope we do have it. But uh, that is not too important. But having known that, the elites twist us around our f their fingers. They use us to be able to achieve their own aims. 
why should we not stop to think that A, B, C, D are all my brothers and sisters? I used to tell people here, when they talk about uh, religion, I don't see what makes it important. I mean, the religion is you. The Christian religion, Muslim religion are all important. I, I don't see. In my own family, we have Christians, we have Muslims, and we all we, we rap together all the time. Nobody thinks about religion because we could have two brothers. One is a Christian, one is a Muslim. Are you going to disown him because he's a Muslim or because he's a Christian? What importance does that make? I don't know, but uh, I just hope that having known now that whether you're a Christian or you're a Muslim, it shouldn't really matter much, we should look for the way forward, the way ahead. We should be a brother's keeper. It shouldn't matter to us whether somebody comes from the south, south, southwest, middle belt, or wherever. You see, I've always worked with different tribes in this country, if you like, different nationalities, like the queries who want us to believe. And I don't see the difference. I don't. I can operate well anywhere, you know, not minding whether they are northerners, southerners, whatever. It's all, always the same to me. We shouldn't let people mislead us. We shouldn't start killing or continue to kill ourselves for nothing. Because you see, once somebody is dead, you can't bring him back. Even if you ask for millions or billions or trillions of Naira, to me, it's to no avail and does not solve any problem. We should struggle to go back, to revert to what it used to be. Anywhere you go to, you see brothers and sisters, without them being of the same, you know, tribe with you. Uh, let me just tell you a small story here. I won't waste your time. Some time ago, I, was, uh, I made a visit to South Carolina, and uh, I went to a family friend. For days, they've been telling us about this, their brother, who it appears they cannot be separated from. I didn't ask them, but I thought those people would be Yorubas, like them. Only to see, when the man came, that this man is from, I think, either Benue or Plato State. Because you see, we've been we will have been fragmented to such an extent that even this Cameroon that has been threatening us since will just over override us. Then we will know that we made mistakes by wanting to cut ourselves into pieces. No matter what problems we have, I believe with dialogue we can solve the problem. We can. Don't start thinking of war because after war you still have to sit down and come and talk about whatever has happened before. Having said that. I don't want to start going through what other people have gone through. It's been a wonderful experience for me. I have, uh, I think I'm lucky to have had to serve under Papa, I call him Papa anyway, Papa the, uh, uh, the chairman. Uh, I thank everybody here who has uh, made it possible for us to finish this sitting, I would say successfully. A lot of things were said, a lot of criticisms were written in the papers, but we thank God that nothing really adverse had happened to us. Thank God for everything. I'm particularly thankful to the media, both the print and electronic media. They have been wonderful. I didn't know they could do as much as this. And uh, I sincerely hope and pray that with the pace they are going, in future, just maybe, they'll be able to compare with any advanced country media in the world. Thank you very much.
My Lord, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I believe, uh, I for one, for example, I believe I have learned a lot. And uh, one thing that people have been, they kept on telling me, some have written, some have talked to me, to my wife, to a lot of people. Why have I not been talking, 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 talking? <laughs> so I believed, uh, as a learner, I believe that uh, mine is just listen to my teacher. That is to listen to whatever has been presented as far as I'm concerned, because I'm not a lawyer, I'm a historian. So I've lived, I've learned a lot of things out of what is called law from today, not only from today, but I believe for the rest of my life. And uh, if not because of age, I think, but I'm still, I think I can still be able to cope up. Maybe I'm a likely a role to be a part-time student of law in AVU's area, possibly. And uh, maybe you pray for me so that I can go ahead, just to see that one day I'll come up maybe to be a son. Like uh, as person. <laughs> uh, it has really been a great occasion, and uh, I believe that we are going to. A lot of people have phoned, telling us that um, when we wind up today, the Nigerian or Nigerians will miss a lot out of the NTA. But uh, I believe maybe the NTA will go along in one way or another, at least be putting us in one form, you know, something like that kind of thing. And I believe the lesson we have learned out of all the proceedings so far, in almost all the five centers we have went down within the country, uh, Nigerians uh, will come together to know that uh, we don't have any other country other than Nigeria itself. So we have to come together to move the country forward for good. And uh, the lessons learned out of all these uh, sittings we have made, I believe, will go along to inculcate certain kind of, uh, uh, maybe uh, kind of uh, people who have to have the view that uh, we are all Nigerians. No matter what, no matter whoever tries to come to disintegrate us, we should try to be together, to be partners in progress so that uh, we can move this country forward to be a united Nigeria. Uh, once more, I had wanted to say a lot of things. My, my other colleagues, I believe, have said it. But only one last point that uh, you Nigerians, or all Nigerians, should pray for us. As we have been together for the first these two or three years almost, we, now, we are now going into the most difficult task ahead of us. That is the question of this report writing. And I believe that um, with their cooperation, with their prayers, I believe, as you have seen us together, fortunately no, none of us have ever felt sick around, so for all these tedious uh, times we have been spending here, um, we do the same, or you should go back and do the same. Pray for us to have that strength to write this report for the benefit of all Nigerians, not only for Nigerians, I believe even other countries of Africa and the rest of the world will definitely come to have a lot of things out of whatever we are going to present to the people of Nigeria. Once more, thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you. May God bless us all. Fellow members of uh, the human rights violations investigation commission, members of our learned and honorable profession, the inner and the outer bar, members of the fourth estate of the realm, the print and electronic media, very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the end of the second chapter. First chapter was when we were arranging things, our offices, wading through 10,000 petitions, categorizing them, putting them in different compartments, selecting those that will be ready for public hearing. That was chapter one.
Chapter 2, the public hearing itself. Having listened to my fellow commissioners, I should have just said, I concur. But unfortunately, I've not been able to do that when I was in the court. And I don't think I can start doing it now. I'm too old to learn to concur. But having listened to them, I feel proud that I'm privileged to work with this type of team. Now, Chief Ajay talked about the powers we have. Yes, we have powers. But if you have the power of an elephant, don't use it like an elephant. And as I said in the judgment, discretion is a better part of valor. And if you're looking for reconciliation in Nigeria, you have to walk carefully, cautiously, thread slowly. If at the end you win, there was a book we read when we were young, She Stoops to Conquer. You gain more that way. Sacrificing some of the aims, expectations of our people on the altar of reconciliation, that's a moot point. We will look into that. But because many of the speeches so far touched peace, justice, reconciliation. And this morning, I heard it said that peace is not the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. And also, in one of the papers, I said that reconciliation is a plenitude of justice. So in reconciliation, we don't abandon justice. That is why I named the paper I'm going to read in Reconciliazione Stat Progressio Humana. I will let you know what that means. In his address at the inauguration of this panel it was called then, now commission, on Monday, the 14th day of June, 1999, His Excellency, the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Chief Ole Shigun Abbasanjo's GCFR remarked inter alia as follows. The investigation panel being inaugurated today is consistent with this administration's policy of openness and transparency in the conduct of government business, as well as our determination to heal the wounds of the past. We want to reconcile all those who feel alienated by past political events, heal the wounds inflicted on our people and restore harmony in our country. We want the injured and the seemingly injured to be reconciled with their oppressors or seeming oppressors. This is the way to move forward. And this is why I chose as the theme of this concluding session of our public hearing in Reconciliazione Stat Progressio Humana, which means literally it is in reconciliation that human progress stands. I'll put it in more eloquent English. Reconciliation is the foundation, the cornerstone of human progress. And this is true both in the temporal and in the spiritual spheres and realms. During the public hearings, the commission decided to take the message of hope and reconciliation to the people. 
instead of having the entire hearings here in Abuja, we spread the said hearings over the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. We started at Abuja on the 23rd of October, 2000. There, we highlighted the universality of human rights and our dream of building a nation where no man is oppressed. A nation whose flag shall be our symbol that peace and justice reign. Peace and justice. These were not to be. The military struck on the 15th day of January 1966, and that ushered in 30 years of military dictatorship with its attendant human rights abuses, assassinations, detention without trials, torture by security and, and law enforcement agents of the government. The commission then moved to Lagos in the southwest zone, where it had evidence from top military officers of the infighting within the ranks of the top echelon of the Nigerian military. Discipline, comradeship, the escape the core of the military was sacrificed in that process. It was the battle of the generals with massive and horrendous human rights abuses <coughs> as their consequential fallouts. Still probing the past and seeking truth in every corner of our land, the commission moved on to Port Harcourt in the south-south geopolitical zone. The sittings here were dominated by evidence of environmental pollution from oil exploration and gas flaring in the Ogoni land, leading to agitation, repression, and the subsequent judicial murder of Kensi Rewiwa and the Ogoni 8, and expulsion of Nigeria from the Commonwealth of Nations. The commission, in spite of the tales of war from Ogoni land, was still intent to achieve reconciliation based on truth and the knowledge of the truth in our land. Our assignment was to help the nation look at its past, to help the nation face that past truthfully and honestly, and then learn the lessons that that past has to teach. And it is true that acknowledgement of the past is part of the process of healing and turning our bitter past into a better future is a challenge facing not only this commission, but facing Nigeria and Nigerians as a whole. It is a charge of Mr. President in his address to the nation when he assumed office on the 29th of May, 1999. There he said, Mr. President addressed let us rise as one to face the task ahead and turn this daunting scene into a new dawn. This was the assignment he gave us, and this is the motive force behind the patient exertions of this commission. From Port Harcourt, then we moved on to Kano. The challenge there was the way to move forward. And that way to move forward is reconciliation. The commission encountered areas of communal clashes, the Tiv Jokun, Katab, Zango Katab, and the trouble spots in Baochi, and these were all trouble spots. These flashpoints across the country each constitutes an albatross around the neck of our 
dear motherland. I don't know who. After page four, there's no page five here. Our uh, dear motherland, it is still our hope that with the crossbow of the Human Rights Violations Investigation Commission, Nigeria can shoot each albatross in the interest of the peace and unity of our motherland and the survival of our nation's democracy. The commission then moved on from Kano to Enugu, where it had distant echoes of the 15th January 1966 coup and felt the ripples of the Nigerian Civil War. There were tales of war, of anguish, and of marginalization. The commission's last, of, last port of call was a second visit to Abuja. Here, the Arawa Consultative Forum joined the circus, followed by the Joint Action Committee on the Middle Belt, then the Afeni Ferry, then Awaku, Awaku Ikwere Convention on the South South Zone. The story was the same, same allegation of oppression and of marginalization. Each ethnic group feels marginalized. From the memoranda and the evidence from these groups, it became apparent that there exists a simmering discontent which should not ever be allowed to boil over. The challenge then is to find an answer to this dreadful fiend called marginalization and find an answer Nigeria must. Then reconciliation. The president charged the commission to reconcile the injured and seemingly injured with their oppressors or seeming oppressors. This commission has tried to do that whenever possible. We are happy that through this commission, a number of individuals have been reconciled. Right from our Abuja first sitting in October last year, the following reconciliation has been recorded. President Abbasanjo and Colonel Bero Fadile, SCP Zachary Biu and Mr. Chris Anyangu, Major Hansa Al Mustafa and Mr. Oshinowo, Major Hansa Al Mustafa and Pastor Oburu, Major Hansa Al Mustafa and Major Bamiyi and Mohammed, Major Hansa Al Mustafa and Professor De Kunle, Brigadier Ibrahim Sabo and Chief Chuma Zeribe, General Shah Bamiyi and Brigadier General Sabo, and General T.Y. Danjuma and Alhaji Omaru Diku. This commission has also recorded some modest gains in reconciling warring communities. During our session in Lagos, we reconciled the quarreling inhabitants of Morocco village. We also recorded our first major breakthrough when the warring Ife and Modakeke communities signed a memorandum of understanding and a joint declaration pledging to live in peace and harmony and to adopt only peaceful means in pursuing any of their rights and entitlements. It is rather unfortunate that the media did not give the Ife Modekeke reconciliation the prominence it rightly deserved. During its session in Port Harcourt River State, the Commission succeeded in brokering a peace accord among the warring groups in Ogoni land. In particular, we managed to unite and amalgamate the Ogoni 4 and the Ogoni 9 into the Ogoni 13. The media reported and held the Ogoni Peace Accord. The New Nigerian of Friday, the 16th of February 2001, in its editorial observed as follows, I put, the peace accord signed by the warring factions in Ogoni land will go down in the socio-political development history of our country 
as one of the landmark achievements of the Human Rights Violations Investigation Commission. The deterioration continued. The new Nigeria is enamored by the series of warm embraces, hugging, and backslapping, which penetrated the signing ceremony of the peace accord. They were symbolic expressions of the grace and magnanimity of a sober people willing to forget a bitter past and forge ahead. Now, we have been accused of opening up old wounds. The commission has in some quarters been accused of opening old wounds. It is a fact that effective therapy demands the opening of a wound, the probing of that wound before applying a salve. There is also need to break the silence, the isolation, the fear, and the falsehood that shrouded past events. Victims have a thirst to know what really happened. On this point, one witness from Asaba, Dr. Mrs. Doris Adekoya, repeated on and off, I want to know why. I want to know why. For if the why is not addressed, what happened may yet happen again. There is also need to establish historical clarity and to see our history interpreted in a way which names the deeds that were done, the reasons why they were done, and those who were responsible. There is also need for the purification and restoration of memory, need to recover and establish a shared memory in order to be able to envisage a different future. If our relation to truth had been broken, either by the arrogance of the mighty military perpetrators or by the impunity of those whom the victims knew and perceived to be guilty, how would it be possible to establish a relationship of trust between individuals or groups, between government and the governed, if the full story is not told? These are some of the reasons why the Commission thought it necessary to probe the past. In conclusion, our next assignment would be the putting of the report, putting together our report. This, no doubt, is the most important aspect of our assignment. Because of the importance the Commission and the nation attaches to this assignment, we would be willing to receive any input from any quarter intended, intended to enrich our recommendations to the proper authority. We would not end this address without expressing our thanks to all, especially security agencies, the print and the electronic media for the wonderful support they have given to the commission. The audience who came day in, day out, day after day, waiting and listening patiently. And finally, to Niger Nigerian people as a whole, who spent sleepless nights watching the proceedings of this commission on their television screen. We thank them. We thank you, one and all. And we ask for your prayers and for you have further assistance toward the success of the assignment given to this commission. <laughs> now, this is the end of the lesson, and the commission will rise. The print media will wait, we'll come and see you. The print media issues. Oh, national anthem. Uh, uh, who has a good voice? 
Let somebody start.